Coach, good to talk to you. Hope all is well. Um, I'm going to start off with just how, what's the challenge in, in balancing everything with uh, all that's going on, the fluid situation, um, the players, you know, uh, contracting the virus, deciding not to go, and trying to get a team ready with you being a hands-on kind of guy for basketball in a month. Uh, definitely makes it uh, challenging. Uh, and, and I think that's the part that you have to embrace. Um, there's no playbook, no handbook uh, for this scenario. Uh, so a lot of it's going to be coaching from the cortex and uh, looking at all the options and, and uh, exhausting all those options, Michael. Hey, Jacques. Brian Lewis. How you doing? Good, Brian. How you doing? All right. Uh, I guess first off, I'd be remiss in uh, not saying hopefully you and yours are well. These are crazy times. Um, when you, I mean, you pointed out, you admitted that this is something of a challenge and that this is, there's no playbook for this. Um, Sean said in evaluating you during this time, you can't just make this about wins and losses. Um, but uh, as an interim who I assume wants to, be a permanent coach. Uh, how do you, I guess, go about trying to display, I mean, above the wins and losses, what have you had conversations with him about in terms of putting your stamp on this and kind of getting this team going in the right direction and putting your best foot forward for getting the job? I think the biggest part, Brian, is uh, showing up uh, and, and being – in a position to have intimate relationships with guys who uh, are joining our team and who have been uh, with me for uh, here in, in Brooklyn for four years. Uh, so I think overall, when I look at this challenge, uh, as a coach, you're always trying to galvanize a group and prepare them to, to win basketball games. Uh, that will be the objective in the eyes of the coaching staff because you have to get guys to want to risk um, this opportunity, continue to uh, be in a position of sacrificing themselves, their family, uh, and sacrificing for the organization. So I have to be totally in in all aspects, and that is coaching them uh, to make them better, coaching them to win basketball games. But at the same time, I will consistently be concerned about uh, their thought process, their mental health, uh, their growth uh, as human beings uh, as we go into this situation together. Um, thank you for asking about my family. Uh, my my uh, family's doing well. It's been an uh, interesting go for me because I've been separated from them for uh, going on months now. Uh, my family has been in um, Phoenix. And, uh, and so at the time, you know, they went to Phoenix. The thought process was I stay here. They'd be in a comfortable position away from uh, uh, cases, which were low. Uh, and now that's, that tide is turning a little bit. So I think we're all in a position of trying to mitigate risk. And uh, while also uh, living our lives and uh, doing our re our part to uh, repair re repair this world that we in also. Thank you. Hey, Jock. Tom Dowd. How are you? Good, Tom. How you doing? Good. Thank you. Um, as the kind of return to play format was formalized, and you were able to start getting guys in the building, how much did you pivot on just what you guys are, are doing and 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 kind of approaching? you know, this really uh, unprecedented situation? From a uh, strategic standpoint, you know, as coaches, we had time to uh, look at film, see the things that we were doing well, see the things that we wanted to improve on, any changes, uh, but at the same time, challenging yourself to uh, do simple better. And, and that's really going to be a goal for us is uh, this reset of games. Uh, you know, the last game we played together as a team, extreme amount of unselfishness, extreme amount of pride for the Brooklyn Nets, extreme amount of, of uh, joy playing in the Laker game. And uh, trying to get back to that position, replicate that, 
won't be easy. Um, but I think overall, that's going to be the challenge for us is to be in a position of uh, galvanizing the group. Hey, Coach. Justin Walters here with Picks 11. Glad to hear all's well with you and the family. I'm wondering, do you think the NBA is making the right decision in restarting the season as well as what's your fair level of heading out to Orlando and understanding that you're leaving the New York area and Florida continues to have a surge in coronavirus cases? Yeah, I, I completely have uh, compassion for it. Like I said, my, uh, uh, my wife and kids are in uh, Phoenix right now, which has an increased rise in cases. Uh, my uh, brother's mom and dad are in California with the extreme uh, cases where they have to adjust uh, how they're opening things. So it uh, hits home without a doubt. Uh, but I think the NBA is trying to create a climate of possibility. And uh, that climate of possibility just so happens to be in Orlando. And uh, I have full trust that all measures will be taken uh, in order to keep uh, players, staff, and everyone involved in, in, in this process uh, at a premium. Thank you. Hey, Jack, this is Bruce Beck from WNBC TV. Uh, wishing you and your family well during these uh, difficult times. Um, I'd like to just know in general with the protocols, do you have any concerns, you know, as you head to Orlando? Or is there something that, that you're thinking about that is kind of scary in any regard? Um, Bruce, good to see you, partner. I have been, like, right now I'm wearing gloves. Uh, and so I've come to a, a point in my life where uh, things have become a part of the way I operate on a daily basis. Uh, I'm in an auxiliary office right now and the door is closed, so I got my mask off. And so normally I'd have my mask on. So uh, I've educated myself in doing my part uh, of trying to get this thing pulled off. Uh, and I think that's a heck of a challenge uh, for us as an organization that I'm a part of and, and the bigger community in the NBA. The one thing that I think we've all been able to learn throughout this whole process is uh, as much as we thought we could predict things and have a hold on life, no, no way. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen tomorrow, but I'm going to pour into uh, my players today. I'm going to pour into my staff today. I'm going to pour into the opportunity of, of making the most of this opportunity. Good luck. Thanks, Bruce. Appreciate it. Hey, Jock, it's Alex Schiffer. Hope you're doing all right. Um, I just want to ask you just what uh, two part questions. What have your conversations been like with, with guys like Spencer and DeAndre who are, are currently battling the virus? And, uh, and then just with Tyler Johnson, you know, your new addition, have you had any conversation with him? And what do you think he can bring to you guys? Uh, also, given that, that Spencer might not be playing and he might have an added responsibility. Yeah, good to see you, Alex. I have been in contact with uh, all players. Uh, and majority of my conversation has been uh, making sure those guys are uh, taken care of with any necessity right now. It's concerning their health mentally and physically. Uh, so those, those conversations have been about. Uh, my conversations with Tyler uh, have been um, just honing in on his ability to compete. He is a competitor, enjoys that, um, wants to contribute to the group. And um, it would be interesting. He's been off the floor for a while. And so uh, the challenge of getting him back on, a, on an NBA court and uh, accustomed to playing, look forward to that with him for sure. Coach, how's it going? It's uh, Christian Winfrey here with the Daily News. Um, just wanted to say thank you for taking out the time to talk to us, number one. Um, two questions for you first. Um, obviously, there's only a handful of, of black uh, head coaches, full-time or interim in your case in the NBA. Um, obviously, we see players trying to do their part in, in 
social activism, obviously, in, in the wake of everything that's going on. But you spoke not too long ago about your experience in, you know, the Rodney King riots not too long ago and just how, how you were able to, to reflect on that. I'm just curious as to how you're able to tap into your, maybe not expertise, but your experience as a black man in America uh, to kind of put things together. Because I, I, I believe the coaches are trying to do something separate from what the players are doing in terms of just like bringing spotlight back to what it should be on. Um, so how are you been, how have you been able to just kind of tap into your experience and kind of put things together with the coaches? Yeah, there's a Hebrew term, tikkum olam, uh, and it talks about repairing the world and doing your part. Uh, I have to do my, my part. And uh, Christian, a big part of it is uh, me as an African-American man, uh, a male raising two African-American mm -hmm. teenagers. And so it starts in my home and my conversations. Uh, the challenge I had for this organization is the conversations that we're having aren't one off. And, and it's great that this is a continuing uh, conversation. Uh, that's where the change and the elevation are happen uh, uh, overall. Uh, the Coaches Association uh, will be doing different things throughout the course of uh, the time in Orlando, whether it is uh, unison in some of the things that we say together, um, uh, presentation of, of um, thoughts and quotes from each team. Uh, it, it's my duty to continue this conversation in our locker room. Uh, I think our group is open to conversation and uh, the challenge of, of growing. And, and it fits into our whole concept of it's, we, we really do care about you, not only on the floor. Right. Uh, so this is an opportunity where I do it in my home with my two boys. I'm proud of that. It's a heck of a challenge, my man. And, uh, and then I got other guys I got to deal with in the locker room. Sure. And uh, uh, follow up on that. Well, completely different related question. But, uh, you know, obviously, if, if Spencer isn't going, is it going to just be give Karras the ball and get out of the way? Or, or how are you going to approach coaching this team when you've got so many guys that aren't, aren't going to be there with you? Yeah, so we're kind of still diagnosing that uh, and, and to see what the roster looks like going forward. And uh, we will be smart about uh, the buildup to this has not been typical. Right. Uh, you know, we're still in one-on-one -on -one phases and, and uh, you, you really have to see what guys are going to look like once we get into the bubble, what kind of shape we're totally in and the ability to play five-on-five. Uh, so those aspects have been missing. And so we'll have to really take a scope of the team and, and be strategic about uh, minutes, rotations. Um, it, it will not look like a previous uh, uh, right. basketball that you've seen for sure. Right. Thanks, Coach. You got it, Christian. Hey, Doc. It's Brian Hoy from the Associated Press. How are you? Good, Brian. Um, I don't know the whole protocol of how things have worked. As a couple guys have, have tested positive now with, with Spencer and DeAndre, has it uh, delayed any of your plans to get the team together? Has the team been together at all? The, the guys been around each other? Have you had to uh, change any of that? And uh, just from a quick basketball standpoint, you had moved DeAndre into the starting lineup. Um, are you comfortable now having to switch that again? For the first part, uh, the team has been around each other in the protocol that the NBA has allowed us to be so. So a certain amount of guys have been in the facility only at the same time. Uh, one guy to a court with one coach, one basketball. Uh, so that challenge of when you talk about a team sport, uh, it's already individualizing your preparation. So we're missing that aspect. Uh, until we get to Orlando. Um, the second part of that of adjusting now that um, um, we don't know what the starting five will look like. In, in my eyes, I'll still have to wait and see how guys are looking once we get into Orlando and make that adjustment. Um, and, and that's the challenge. Uh, whether it's adjusting the way we play offensively and def defensively, that could happen in two weeks leading up into our first game. Um, and so that's not your normal preparation, but uh, we, we're going to – we might bend a little bit, but we're not going to break, partner. 
Sounds like a piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> Just like we drew it up. Yeah. Uh, last question. Last question, guys. Coach Vaughn, it's uh, Tina Servacio from Fox 5 New York. Are you able to hear me? I am, Tina. How you doing? Very good, very good. You've talked so much about mitigating risk and being empathetic to the spikes in different states and in Florida because of your family. Do you have any level of concern or what kind of is your level of doubt that this season might not be able to get finished in Orlando? Yeah, I think overall, I think the amount of work that's gone into putting players and staff and organizations in a position to compete um, and the work that's gone behind it is um, at, at an all-time collaboration uh, amongst organizations to get this done. Um, and, and I think you look at just the leadership from Adam and the pulse of the other GMs and coaches around the league, uh, the ability to get back on the floor and compete. At the end of the day, you strip things down. That's why we're in this basketball game, uh, to do those things. The opportunity is in front of ourselves to, to play the game of basketball. When I don't know what's going to happen at the end of the week, but this organization, we're going to give all effort in trying to get this completed and uh, uh, represent Brooklyn the best way we can.